Awesome. Hey guys, and welcome to the Pig Daily. It is daily number 62 today, where we bring you a quick meta update. Today's going to be a very quick episode talking about Bjorn's addition of Hellbats to his standard uh, Stim Marine Medivac opening in TVZ. And this is a really cool meta change, which we've seen from him specifically to, uh, to counteract the fact that Zergs, basically we're getting used to this 2-1-1 build, this two barracks, one factory, one starport, very fast Medivac Stimrush. They were defending it with the bare minimum of units just using Queens and Zerglings, shutting it down while being quite greedy behind it, getting very fast upgrades and steadily getting a little bit ahead. So Beyond's answer to this is said, well, you guys are skipping Roaches because they were too immobile to keep up with my drops. You were skipping Banelings because you think you can get away with just Lings and Queens. How can I punish this? Let's add a couple Hellbats in. Um, the very first pressure still acts in the same way, but then the follow-up one, there's like four Hellbats, the Zerglings just disappear and melt, the Marines stim on top of the Queens, and everything dies. So this was a really cool change-up from, um, from Bion, which he, uh, which he kind of showed in a few tournament games recently. So let's go and look at the one from Kesper Cup yesterday. Oh, that's not the uh, overlay we want. That's, that's what we want. We're just going to show you guys... Here, so this is from uh, Beyond vs. Rogue. Rogue didn't play too inspiringly, uh, too amazingly throughout. However, you can see here he's got some Zerglings, he's got five or six Queens, so he's deflecting this first wave of the, the Marine Rush just very easily, only loses a bit of creep, but here comes the Hellions from behind, and, uh, you know, Rogue's just there making a lair, making a Baneling Nest, he's been mixing in a lot of drones, um, you know, it's not like he's got a massive worker lead, as you can see in the top right, 45 to 39, but uh, he's being very efficient with his tech and upgrades. Now, the Hellbats are going to morph here. 5 minutes 40, 5 minutes 50 around here is when it hits. Stim's on in, and notice because the Queens, they really need those Zerglings to help fight the Marines, but because the Zerglings simply cannot engage the Hellbats, the Marines can just Stim on top, pick off all the Queens. At the same time, he's actually dropping a couple of Marines in the back of the natural. Excuse me. And uh, he's even got a Reaper in there for good measure because he's beyond and he can micro that. Stims the Marines backwards while the Hellbats rip the Zerglings apart and takes the easiest tournament victory of his life. <laughs> um, or his easiest uh, tournament game. Um, basically, that, that's the ideal situation. It's perfect. Later on, I'm going to show you guys the situation where the Zerg does get Banelings and how you can still play it out from there. But this is just a really cool, very small adjustment Terran players have made. Um, you know, for weeks now, there's been Terran players who love 2 one one and Zerg's complaining about it and saying, oh, you can't deal with this. Finally, a lot of Zerg players started just shutting it down, really getting on top of it. And it's right at the same moment where finally a Terran is like, how about I change the build a little bit? Add something as simple as four Hellbats into that first push, and suddenly the Zerg, uh, that super efficient streamlined Zerg defense just falls apart. So let's talk you guys through the actual adjustment in terms of the build order now. Um, now, unfortunately, I can't get replays of Beyond doing it, so I've got um, only replay, replays of my pleb self here. And uh, I'm no, it's not going to be executed nearly as well as Beyond, but... The timings, uh, the general order of things is still going to be exactly the same, even if everything's slightly slower. So in terms of your opening, you do want to open up with your standard 2-1-1 build. It's identical for a long time. For anyone who's not familiar with it, I'll give you a very quick overview while we fast forward. You go barracks, gas, you then build a second barracks before you build your depot. That'll go down in just a moment. You then want to put down your depot and a reactor right after your first reaper. When you have 100 gas, you want to drop a factory and a second gas. You want to start a tech lab immediately on the second barracks. Constantly build marines out of that reactor, as well as out of this tech lab barracks. You also want to start stim here. You can wait as late as about... Whoa, sorry. As late as about 3 minutes 30 to drop your starport, but that's the absolute latest. Preferably drop it like 325, and you always want to just sit with the factory, not really doing anything until the starport's ready. So technically, you could build the factory slightly later. You just kind of build it straight away to make sure it's all ready and on time. And then you want to start a reactor soon after that, without interrupting that 3 marine production. And we're going to swap the starport onto the reactor to build 2 marines. So, really typical stuff. Obviously, you start walling off your natural... Uh, against Zergling Floods, you just keep your Marines in a solid wall on your ramp so Zerglings can't get up and get surface area, can't get the wraparound, and you'll be able to hold against that. You swap the factory in the starport, you build two medevacs, and this is where we start to see adjustments um, that Bjorn actually makes to make it work. So, 
Stim's on the way, he's still building three marines, but here's where it gets cute. He actually lifts this barracks and puts the factory down on this reactor. Gangway, coming through. So just gonna wait for that last marine to finish. Beyond super crisp, he doesn't he doesn't take as long to swap his buildings as me. And then starts double heli in production. He'll often then immediately start, uh, he usually squeezes in one marine. He, he normally swaps this slightly faster, builds one marine, then loads up his medevacs with a full 16 marines. I'm a pleb who can't execute as well as Bjorn, so I only have 14 marines, but you get the idea. These barracks are gonna, the barrack, it's, the barracks now swaps onto the starports reactor, so you can continue three marine production at a time while building just a single medevac and building those hellions constantly two at a time. Notice because this is very mineral heavy with the hellions, you do not need a third gas for a very long time. You also want to start your armory as you're picking up of those Research medevacs to move out on the map complete. around five minutes. Continuing depots, continuing go, go, to build go. marines, and your Just only next ready. transitionary move from this is quite a long ways away. All you want to do is poke with the marines and, and run around, keep on building units, keep building hellions, medevacs, marines. This will chew through all your minerals. When you do eventually get enough minerals, often around five minutes 30, is when Beyond would put down a third CC. Mine is going to be a lot later than that because, like I said, I'm a pleb. I'm not Beyond. Um, I'm not. I'm not the literal god of Terran. The uh, the hero, the teamless hero. I'm just not as good at Starcraft as he is. But Hellions are now out. Um, you also want to go straight into combat shields immediately after Stim finishes because that can be very important um, a little bit later. Uh, and you want to run straight across the map, and often with your first four Hellions, like I said, about 5 minutes 40 normally, I'm slightly slower. You want to morph Hellbats, and you want to start pushing in. And the thing is, this just can absolutely crush. By the way, I'm sorry for having to use those buttons at the top. I've got my, my hotkeys are having a conflict right now. The Zerglings just get roasted and toasted. Even if you lose some medevacs to the Queen Focus Fire, the moment the Zerglings are done, your Marines can get on top of those Queens. And you can see that as you get on top of those Queens, everything just disappears if you can get on top of them. And even though I don't end up holding it, he actually builds a lot of Zerglings. I take such a good trade there um, that, you know, I'm actually in a completely fine position. And every, every, like right now, he's just got to keep building Zerglings as much as he possibly can. Uh, he barely hung on there. If we look at his infrastructure. Jesus, how do I swap to everyone's camera up there? Okay. He's only got three hatcheries, so no fourth hatchery, no macro hatch. And he also had to pull every queen out of his base in order to hold there. He had to pull every queen. So he, that was such a desperate hold. He can't spend his money right now because he's missed so many injects. He's desperately trying to rebuild queens, even though his upgrades are infinitely ahead of mine because he's rushed those out super fast. Uh, you know, he's actually in a pretty bad spot and I'm just going to keep pressuring. I've got the third CC getting uh, finished up. I've got double eBay going down. I'm going to start adding uh, three or four more barracks and you can definitely make those sort of macro transitions work. Uh, I'm nowhere near as refined as, you know, I've literally only played this five or six times this very morning just before doing this show, so uh, we will look at Beyond doing it versus Dark where he holds the initial pressure and how he transitions as well. He GG'd there because he knew he was behind and because we only really wanted to focus on that early pressure. I was up like 20 supply there anyway. So uh, that's, that's the general gist of the build. Pretty simple stuff. The important thing is as soon as your factory swaps off the reactor for the starport to land, your factory goes and takes the reactor of the barracks, starts the double Hellion production, and that barracks will then swap back onto the starport reactor after the starport builds two medevacs. So there's a complex swapping of add-ons back and forwards, but it allows you to be super streamlined, super cute. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what is this actually good against? Um, why is this so smart? I mentioned it at the start. It's because Zergs aren't building roaches or banelings. Those are the units which are really good at just knocking hellbats down. They uh, also don't take as monstrous damage from hellbats because they're not light units like Zerglings. While Zerglings just get wrecked by the, the splash damage of the hellbats, you know, unless the hellbats are in very small numbers and very spread out so the Zerglings can just surround them and kill them quickly, the Hellbats, when they get in a big clump, especially with something like Marines dishing out damage behind them, uh, they just chew through your army. So this is a really cute addition. It's a way of punishing greedy Zergs. Now, let's talk about should you do this on ladder. If you're playing against players who are playing Banelings every single game um, or Roaches every single game, 
maybe you don't need to make this adjustment. Maybe just doing a normal 211 is good enough for you. However, you don't need to think it's an automatic loss or automatically bad if they do make banelings because they're still going to be slow banelings. Uh, it's still going to be pretty nice there. Of course, if you do see roaches, you probably want to stop held that production immediately, start building siege tanks as that's you know something you really need against Roach Ravager is siege tanks. But uh, otherwise, it can work really well. So to finish up, let's quickly take a look at how Dark transitions uh, in this particular game against... Um, Sorry, how beyond, how beyond transitions against Dark. So we'll just take a look here. Notice, um, you know, Dark studied Beyond. Um, he plays super safe here. So when he comes in with his first pressure, Dark already has a Baneling Nest ready and he's already morphing Banelings. And that really is the key to, uh, to being able to hold this. The Hellbats morph, the Marines are here. It's looking super scary. On the production tab behind this, we should see a third CC pop up on that minimap right about now, but it looks like Beyond's going to delay it a little bit longer this game. And he kind of comes in, and because there's Banelings there, you notice they killed the few Hellbats at the front, and suddenly it's much harder for Beyond to get the damage done. We see a wave of Zerkins go in there and get shredded pretty hard. Beyond even always reinforces with this extra medevac and drops Marines while he's hitting, because he knows how important it is to be hitting hard and fast. And even, even here he still almost overwhelms. Those eight queens were all completely out of energy at the end of that. And Dark barely hangs on. And at the end of it, 42 drones versus 41. So as long as you're good at spreading and pulling back your marines especially and making sure your hellbats aren't too clumped, you can still transition from here. You can still make it work. Um, and that's, that's something which works out very well. In this particular game, he actually builds the third command center on location to take advantage of the... Uh, the fact that he's just being so aggressive out there. And then he very steadily adds on his 1-1 upgrades. He starts going for... Actually, I'm trying to... I'm just double-checking the VOD. I don't want to show too much of the VOD, guys, because it's not my content. So I really, you know, should not be showing more than very small snippets. Uh, and there we go. one 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 Yeah, yeah. And then he just goes up to 8 barracks and plays a standard game from there. So it's very specific. Uh, super cool. It's definitely something you could just learn how to do this. And it's probably going to help a lot as long as you're not playing against roaches. It's a sick little timing, uh, and that's about it. Have fun playing with it, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, if there's any questions in chat, shout them out right now. I don't see any in there. Probably should have asked for those a little bit earlier. I wanted this to be a very short meta update episode. I didn't want this to be a long, drawn-out thing because it really is just this cute little adjustment which has allowed him to just smack Rogue. He ended up winning that game against Dark as well, um, if I remember correctly. I think he just barely won. Oh, maybe he did lose that game, actually. Oh, no, he lost that game in the end. It was super, super close. So even though Dark was like as prepared as he possibly could be, um, he, only, he only barely held on in the early game and had to play a very long, drawn-out late game in order to steadily win that. Uh, of course, big thanks to uh, Spoo TV, Esports TV, uh, and Kespa for that. Uh, the VODs, um, the first one is from Kespa Cup. And the second one is from the cross final round of four match two. The first one was Kesper Cup, Beyond vs. Rogue, round of 16, group A of the losers match. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Um, one quick announcement. I will be skipping my daily on my Monday. That's your Sunday if you're in America or Europe. The reason is it's a public holiday here and uh, spending a bit of time with my, with my lady. So... Um, my lady, because when you say it like that, it doesn't sound weird at all. Um, yeah, we're, we're going out. We've got, got some dates planned and stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, I will miss that daily, but I will be back on Tuesday as per normal. So, thanks for hanging out. I hope you guys appreciate it. As always, shout out any questions in YouTube comments, Team Liquid Thread, uh, wherever, and I'll do my best to discuss, debate, and, uh, and disagree with you if, uh, if necessary. Anyway, that's all. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Don't forget to hug a cactus, lick a walrus, and of course, punch a watermelon to the moon. I'll catch you guys next time. Goodbye and good night.